Suppose that I have the graph of two different series. There's an AN and there's a BN, and the BN is always bigger than the AN, and both of them are positive. What we're going to study in this video is a comparison test, where you compare the convergence or divergence of the AN to the convergence or the divergence of the BN. So for instance, imagine that the series, the sum of the ANs, was a divergent series. The smaller of those two, when you added them up, went off to infinity. Well, then the BNs, which are something that are bigger than the ANs, they're bigger than a divergent series, they must be divergent as well. Which is to say that if the series, the sum of the ANs diverges, then so too does the BNs. And then the other way around is that if the bigger series, if the BN, if that converges, then the smaller series, the AN, are going to converge as well. This is the comparison test. Let's see how this applies in a specific example like this one. This is a pretty messy series. We've got an n minus 1 on the top, a 2n cubed plus an n squared on the bottom. It's not one that I can do by the other methods. It's not a geometric series. It's not a p-series. I can go and try to do an integral test on it, but that looks like a messy integral. So what can we do? Well, let me consider the ans here, this expression, and let's try to do a comparison with something that's a little bit nicer. Indeed, if I look at the numerator, if I look at the n minus 1 here, well, the numerator, because I subtract 1, is strictly greater than if I have the same denominator but only n on top. As in, this is less than n over 2n cubed plus n squared. And then if I focus my efforts now on the denominator, well, in the denominator I have this plus n squared. n squared is something positive, so adding something positive in the denominator makes the entire thing smaller. So it's also going to be smaller if I just take away that n squared and just write it as n over 2n cubed. This is a strict inequality. And then n over n cubed, I can cancel out one copy of n, and I'm just left with 1 over 2n squared. So I have this inequality that's taken this messy thing, the an, that I didn't like. So I have this inequality that's taken this messy thing, the an, that I didn't like, and related it to a bn, which is much simpler. In fact, I know whether this bn converges or diverges. It is a p-series. Back when we did the integral test, when we compare it to the p-integral, the improper integral, 1 up to infinity of 1 over x squared, that converged because the p of 2 is greater than 1. So indeed, we know that the sum of this 1 over 2n squared, the bn's, that converges by the p-test. And if this bigger thing converges, then the smaller ones, the sum of the ans, has to converge as well. So what do we get? We get that this summation indeed converges too. Notice, by the way, that because I demanded that the ans and the bns were both positive, that meant that you didn't have some scenario where the bigger one converged, but the smaller one went down to minus infinity. Going down to zero was the smallest it could be. So this comparison test is really useful for converting series that are messy and complicated and we don't want to deal with into much simpler ones, ones that hopefully we already know the answer to whether it converges or whether it diverges. Notice, by the way, that it doesn't converge to the same thing. Just because the one converges and the other converges, it doesn't mean they converge to the same value. The comparison test is useless for that. It only answers the question of convergence or divergence. Finally, I want to point out that we've seen a comparison test before. If this comparison test applied to series where I had a bigger bn and a smaller an, we've also seen one for improper integrals. We had a picture somewhat like this, where you had a bigger function and a smaller function. And you'd say something like this. If the larger function converges in the integral from, say, 1 up to infinity, then the smaller one converges as well. And if the smaller one diverges, the bigger one diverges as well. The final thing I want to talk about is don't get yourself tricked. If you cannot find an inequality that works the right way, where it's the bigger one converging telling you the smaller one converging, or the smaller one diverging telling you the bigger one diverging, if it's not one of those two scenarios, you can't apply the comparison test. So for example, if the larger one diverges, it doesn't tell you anything about what the smaller one does, because the smaller one could converge and something bigger than it could diverge. That is entirely possible. And likewise, if the smaller one converges, well, that doesn't tell you anything at all about the bigger one, because the bigger one could still diverge despite the smaller one converging. 